Lee, first of all, it is such a pleasure to meet you and stand before you today. Congratulations on doing such an amazing role, a job on your role. So you have to tell me, what was it like for you to be a part of this project? Uh, well, I loved making it with two of my best friends, uh, Crew and Isaac, and then to go to Estonia for six months together was probably the best part about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did this project come about for you? Uh, so it was in, right in the middle of the pandemic, and uh, we had the idea to make it, and from the conception, we probably were shooting within eight months. Um, so I have to go straight to it, because obviously you played the key role. Yes. I'm going to take it all the way to the end of the movie, the nudity shot. Was it difficult for you to step into that particular role, you know, working on this project? Like, was it difficult for you to, you know, stand there naked on camera? Talk to me about that. I always wonder that with actors and actresses. So that was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done as an actor. And um, in, uh, in the, in when you read the script, we, uh, you know, you don't plan for it, but they're like, hey, how are you going to shoot this? And as you know, we had uh, female nudity in it, and we couldn't just, like, uh, shoot it with me, uh, you know, covered up. So, like, at least on set, we're like, okay, we're going to do it, you know, and then we'll, we won't use it if we don't. And um, I think it added a lot, uh, at least that's what we all came, in terms of uh, after he's done what he's done, to then be um, so, um, like, uh, like broken and then being seen in that way and vulnerable it's very Adam and Eve like actually seeing each other's nakedness for the first time and then it, like accepting all the flaws and so we're like you know what let's leave it in some people have been uncomfortable I'm uncomfortable <laughs> that actually that that particular scene was most intriguing to me because although this is like a psychological thriller a horror film all of the things I feel like ending it the way that they took that creative direction was it was so soft right it softened up the fact that this is like a scary thriller so you have to tell me the fact that it was a horror film intermixed with religion and children that's a lot that's loaded there are a lot of layers to that were you a little hesitant or did you have any type of reservation i did try not to play the role that is true and i was we were constantly hesitant because we wanted to make uh, a horror film that was like hopeful and also being catholic uh there was a film professor of mine who was an ex-Jesuit priest, and he said that horror was the only genre of film where you could make a film uh, where God or divinity is the subject and have mainstream audiences accept it. And so I really love the idea of doing this. I know there's a lot of uh, Christians or Catholics that are going to call it blasphemous. I just read an interview today, or uh, an article today, but then there's others that like see it and they're hopeful and then they engage. Like people who really, you know, might be interested in these kind of, uh, like as a Christian, like those ideas. Do you feel like, because obviously there are a ton of horror films out here on all of these different networks, series, movies, you know, dating way, way back. Do you feel like that religion aspect on this film actually makes it unique compared to other horror films out there? Yeah, I do. I, 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 we try to take uh, religion as seriously uh, in a film as you can, like... Uh, where I think a lot of the horror films now that deals with religion, they don't, they're either, they, they, they you know, it's, it's campy or it's cheesy and, you know, uh, they, they I, I forget a really good verbiage they use, but like the, without, I don't want to denigrate any other movies, but yeah, um, yeah. So before I let you go, are you currently working on any other projects that you can share with me today? Like what's next up for Lee? So I uh, love making films, not just through uh, my, uh, my own Catholic faith, but that just explore the idea of God and divinity. And so I'm going to do that with uh, Inuit mythology in the same sense. It's a detective thriller, uh, supernatural, uh, set in the Arctic with Inuits. Yeah. So. Anyone that you've not worked with in the television, movie, film industry that you truly desire to work on a project with? Oh my gosh. I mean, my uh, big man crush is Bradley Cooper and everything he does. <laughs> I know from the writing, directing, the acting. So if I ever can, you know, work hard enough to like, get cast in a smaller role with him, oh my God. Yeah. I love it. And I promise you, this is the last thing. One word out of the English dictionary that you live by every single day of your life. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I love the thought in this. Tough. Like, whether I don't think I want to say love or faith, 
uh, like to persevere in the face of it. Yeah, I uh, I try to be as much love as I can. You know, I that's there's a better word than that. That's why I was like, you know, we are rolling with love tonight. We are rolling with love. Right? Yes. <laughs> you heard it from Lee himself. Lee, congratulations on everything. I absolutely love the film. I love your role. And I'm definitely keeping my eyes out on the next project. Okay? Thank you, Thank you so That's much. A great interview. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac, how are you this evening? I am going straight in. Please, please tell me how this project came about for you. Yeah, you know, I ha have had a long standing, close working relationship with Leroy and crew, the directors. We had done another film together, so in this project, I hadn't been able to do the last couple projects with them because I actually stopped doing anything that wasn't horror, basically. Genre in general, but practically speaking, that meant horror. So I'd done three horror films in a row before I shot this one. When they came to me with this one, you know, it was right up my alley, so I said, you know what, guys, I'm in. So horror is clearly a passion of yours. It is. Tell me, does that kind of derive and come from like your childhood, like let's just say as a teenager, as a younger man, right, grade school, young boy, did you always know, hey, I want to be a part of, you know, the person behind the scene of a horror film, like this is my life, like this is the career that I desire to have. I think so. You know, my father let me watch whatever films I wanted when I was a kid and rent whatever I wanted from the video store and they didn't have that much supervision over it. So sometimes I saw some really messed up stuff. But anyhow, like from a very early age, I was watching movies that were much more adult than I, you know, most people would say I should have been. And some of those were horror movies that really affected me. Um, and others that didn't affect me as much as they should have. But anyhow, I was seeing a lot of really crazy stuff. Like, I think I, when I was four years old, I saw a movie called Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Um, and, yeah, and I tried to tell my dad, like, Dad, it's rated R. And he had no, but I just didn't have the words to describe how screwed up what, what was happening in the movie was. And he wasn't watching the movie with me. I was by myself. So he was just kind of shrugged it off. He was like, life is rated R, son. <laughs> love your daddy. Can I just say that? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that really that led directly to where I am right now. Directly. You know what? I have always been interested to know how are you able to separate it from your personal life, especially being a producer and a director. Do you never like experience nightmares? And I'm being very serious here, right? This is a serious yeah. question. Like nightmares, you get like weird visions. Like how do you not necessarily, I guess, take it home? How do you separate it? That's a good question. I think for horror, the, the thing about filmmaking in general, not just horror, is that behind the scenes in the process of constructing a film, there's just so much fabrication and artifice and and everything is you know everything you see on screen is just like a tiny tiny little telescope into one part of what the apparatus is what the entire you know the crew and the lights and and the actors and just the trailers and you know when you're on a film set it's everything is just play basically you know an actor even for the actors they'll have to be crawling through blood and stab someone's face and then as soon as you call cut it just all smiles and laughs it's all it's very much playful you know it's all of the scare comes in the way it's cut together the sound design like it's just so artificial when you're making horror films that i think it's it's i you know there's nothing to take home with you it's just a bunch of grown-ups screwing around and having fun with each other yeah i want to go back to the stabbing part yeah <laughs> Because let's talk about the way this movie kicks off. I mean, gruesome is just like one word to describe it, right? I'm excited for the viewers to check yeah. it out. But that was one hell of a start to yeah. a movie. Like, talk to me a little about that creative direction that you as a producer, director, the team, the writer, music team took with that part. The, like, the gore and all of that. Okay, look. The bottom line is with a horror film, this is what I always say, because I'm also a huge fan of horror films. When I watch a horror film, 
I demand what I refer to as meat and potatoes. You know, if it's it doesn't have to be gore, but whatever the genre, subgenre of that film is, like if it's a ghost movie, I want to see that ghost. I want that ghost to be knocking on the wall. You know, I want the ghost to be all over the place. You know, if it's if it's aliens, I want to see the aliens. You know, and and you just it's about those special moments that can't exist in any other film. You're never gonna have gore in a drama or a sci-fi film or or whatever. And it's like it, it is so important because. You know, even though intellectually it's it's strange to consider the fact that people like to see mangled bodies and chopped off limbs and beheadings and blood and guts and so on. But the reality is, psychologically, I think we are comforted by these things. I think we all have this inherent sense of our own mortality. And seeing the, you know, gore helps us process our own, like, trauma and just inner conflict about our own forthcoming deaths you know it's like seeing other people die is kind of like reassuring in a way where it's like you know it's just it's it's almost you know a beautiful like parental thing almost I, I don't know I think it it really is a profound thing and I think that's one of the reasons why people love horror films and they love gore so before I let you go, yeah. I would love to hear some of your highlights and lowlights working on set and just working on this project in general. And one thing in particular that you are absolutely going to miss about working with this team. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to miss working with these guys because they're two of my best friends, you know. Hopefully we get to work together again, but, you know, we don't have something coming up immediately you know it's like so i won't be working with leroy or crew on anything anytime momentarily soon at least um i'm gonna miss it's it's about friendship i think one of the most beautiful things about being a filmmaker is you get to spend so much time with your colleagues and like there's just you don't have that boundary of being in an office and then going home at the end of the day you're always you're staying in the same hotel as them and you're always having dinner scheduled with them you're eating breakfast in the lobby in the morning with them and you're eating lunch with them at the tables you know on set it's like you spend your entire day with with your collaborators when you're a filmmaker for better or worse it's also bad because you don't get to go home and spend that time with your family you know but the reality is it's 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 neither good nor bad it's just a fact but embrace to embrace it you know the bright side is you get to form these really deep beautiful bonds with your collaborators and that's what Leroy and crew and I have is a true true brotherhood um, so I'm gonna miss you know spending all day every day with them <laughs> I love it well it was such a pleasure chatting with yeah. you congratulations on everything thank I absolutely you. love the film and thank again you. I'm looking forward to the viewers checking it out thank you very much congrats Hello, crew. How are you? Look, I'm trying to make sure I got you from head to toe. So first, how did this like project fall into your lap? You have to take me back. Okay. Well, I got bring me on a journey. I got a call from Leroy. It says uh, my dad has an idea for uh, for a movie, and then he told me about a, a nun that's pregnant with the Antichrist and Messiah. And I was like, How come no one's thought of this before? This is in, it's so like yeah, it's like it grabs your attention. And then within a couple months, they had a draft, and then we were, I started on a pitch deck, and then we were off to the races. Tell me about some of the roadblocks that you face, you know, oh. being behind the scenes on this project. Some of the roadblocks blocks that you're open to, you know, sharing sure. with me today. <laughs> well, we shot during COVID. So when, um, when we got to Estonia, there was six hours light a day, and it was the safest place to be in the world for COVID. But the time we started shooting, there were, it was like the worst. And so we were working with the government and other European countries and to uh, develop COVID protocols in order to keep everybody safe and protected. And then the time we left, there was no, it was, uh, the light was 24 seven, it was Midsommar, so the sun never went down. And so it was like, like the environment was constantly changing and then like dealing with that and filming and scheduling is very difficult, but like we were blessed. like. Like snow had been gone for weeks, and then we had an exterior because of locations and actor schedules, and then it snowed eight inches. You know, things like that happened throughout the film. It was, it was, you know, pretty unbelievable. That's crazy. So 
tell me about the location. How did the location, you know, of this on set and film and process come about? Was it Lee's entire idea, his father's idea, or did all of the producers and directors collaborate, you know, about the actual location? Oh, the location? So, I mean, we all three are very big on location. It saves you, when you got find the right place, it saves you so much money for, like, set design and what you have to build and what you have to buy. So, I mean, we didn't, this is not a big, like, financial film. Like, this is a very small budget. And so, locations were everything. So, we, we as soon as we got there, we were on the go. And then our producer, Elena Litnova over there, showed us everything the country had to offer. Like, we, we location scouted for over a month, every day, like five days a week. It was it was pretty intense, but it was awesome. I'm curious to hear because something that always interests me about horror films yeah. is the background music. <laughs> Talk to me about the creative direction and just the overall collaboration, you know, aspect yeah. um, as a producer, director, even the writers, you know, working with the music experts behind the scenes on this project. We had an ace in our hole in our pocket with Brent Kaiser at Unbridled Sound, who's like as good as it gets in sound design. He's the most sought after person in the world. And so we had to find a, a, a composer that fit um, the film. And we had a, a, an Estonian editor to, I did the assembly with out there for two months. And um, he helped get authenticity to the region and our temp, right? And then, uh, then we just built it out, slowly built it out. And then when we brought Toady on, who is unbelievable, he was the arranger on Joker. His sister is Hilder, who won the Academy Award for Joker. And they have a, a music collective that he's a part of, and he just knocked it out of the park. It doesn't sound like it was complex, you know, at all, kind of pulling everything all together. So that's a good thing, right? So as far as the cast, who would you say you had the, I don't know, it's kind of hard for me to ask this. Like, who was your, yeah, who was your favorite cast member? That would be Lee guy. That would be my favorite cast guy. It'd be him. Yeah, we're just like a very, we have a very brother relationship. We've known each other a long time. His family and me are very close, and his brother, Kane, his actual brother, Kane, and I are very close. So it was great working with him in that capacity. So that's interesting because you guys have a personal relationship and friendship, which is a really good thing. Do you not find that difficult at times to work with friends? It does. Oh yeah, but how do you balance it? You just have to trust one another. You have to get in a room and know that it's going to be okay, and you got to fight it out, and then may the best idea win. That's kind of how it started, but at the towards the end, instead of uh, like conceding an idea, it became just collaboration. It was like build off each other to get there. But once you w figure out how to work with each other, it's kind of easy. There are clearly like hundreds and thousands of people out there who are absolutely going to fall in love with the film, right? But who would you say should steer clear and stay away from this film? Who? Um, what any, type of audience? Under 18. <laughs> Any, like this is a movie for adults. It like we examine biblical themes in a very raw way. Like we don't pull any punches. Everything is, nothing's hidden here. And that's in order to evoke a conversation about like, like you know, like actually what these themes are trying to say and are like in in the Bible or in other religions as well. And so, it's not for children. It's for adults. I love it. One word out of the English dictionary that you live by every single day of your life. One word? Lee word was love. I shouldn't share his secret. That's a great one. Um, empathy. Why is that? I think it's an artist's superpower, and I think anytime you can put yourself in someone else's shoes, it gives you uh, more, of a, more of a purpose, more of an advantage, and then to help people and yourself. Leticia, thank you. It was such a pleasure chatting with you. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Thank you.